now to the story that everyone is talking about. We're still licking our wounds here. <laughs> the madness officially underway with busted brackets stacking up quickly. The biggest upset so far finds Big Blue Nation on the losing end of round one. Yeah, sports director Michael Epps joins us now live from Pittsburgh where fans are no doubt in shock. Michael. Hey, Marvin and Andrea, good evening. I think the uh, the term fire cow is trending right now on Twitter, and that's a conversation for another day, all the frustrations with John Calipari and with this Kentucky basketball team. But I think right now it's a, it's a little bit of pandemonium here, here in Pittsburgh. I'm sweating. The locker room was quite a scene that I just got out of running up here to talk to you guys and really talking to the guys, the fans, and everyone, especially seeing the players walk out through the tunnel into the locker room, you could see the frustration, you could see the sadness. It really was pretty quiet, just tears, silence, heads down, I mean, hands on heads, towels on heads. It's the scene that you would completely expect, but you just do not expect a moment like this for a team as good as Kentucky with all the talent and the five stars that it has to go out and lose this way, a three seed to a 14th seed. Oakland pulling off a massive, massive program win for them up in Michigan, 80 to 76. The final behind an absolutely unbelievable game from Jack Gokey, 10 threes. He had seven in the first half, set in NCAA tournament records against Kentucky. He was one shy of the all time tournament record and Kentucky really just did not have an answer for him tried to double him a little bit when he was running off some off ball screens that did not work Kentucky looked lost from the jump struggling with Oakland's zone could not really score the basketball early with missed threes and missed shots inside the paint and really defensively they played pretty well outside of letting 10 threes go from a sharpshooter that used to play division two basketball before getting to a mid-major in Oakland and having the game of his life. Pretty stunning moment for Kentucky that now sees its season come to an end and the questions will continue to build obviously with John Calipari but especially for the players. You know Rob Dillingham is headed to the NBA as a top five pick, lottery pick at least and we thought Reed Shepard was the same but Marvin and Andrew you both are from Kentucky. You guys know how much this kid loves the state of Kentucky, loves Kentucky basketball and the legacy when you think about that it doesn't matter as much to some of the other guys that aren't from here. His legacy matters and Reed only scored three points. He did not shoot a lot, missed a couple made one three-pointer and you think the way that his dad went out on top winning two championships in three years in a Kentucky uniform you just think <laughs> is that the way that he wants to go out so maybe some hope that maybe he could come back but those are all conversations for the next few days and weeks but for now the stunning stunning development is that Kentucky is out not even playing the winner of Texas Tech and NC State which is about to tip off here in, in Pittsburgh and right now they're about to head on a flight back home so pretty stunning we're gonna talk a little bit more about this game later in sports Jordan Adams is with me now and he is in the locker room talking to the players so we're gonna play a little bit about what he has to say and what John Calipari has to say at the podium and he's got some serious questions to ask possibly of is was this his final game coaching at Kentucky we will see that's all coming up in the next hour but for now reporting live here in Pittsburgh I'm Michael Epps Fox 56 Sports conversation going here tonight we have Dick Gabriel on the phone the big blue insider here to help us you know kind of make sense of what we just saw out there I think we're all in shock yeah still. and Dick of course gets to hear what all the fans yes. have to say you know they're gonna have a lot to say Dick thanks for joining us I guess the big question right now is uh, what is the state of this program is has the gold standard lost its luster that's a fair question Marvin uh, yeah in fact somebody just uh, tweeted or put on X Kentucky is now Indiana, which is a stinging criticism because, as you guys probably know, you know, Indiana used to be really relevant in college basketball, and it isn't anymore. Now you have to wonder about Kentucky. But what was shocking to me about this is I didn't think Kentucky would make the Final Four, but I thought the Wildcats would get to the second weekend. But I really thought that if Kentucky lost, if and when, it would be the way it lost to Mississippi State. Uh, or I'm not Mississippi State, but Texas A&M, straight drives to the basket, too many offensive rebounds. None of that really happened tonight. 
it was a kid who had a knife for the ages. They couldn't figure out a way to slow him down. But more than anything, they couldn't figure out a way to attack the Oakland zone, and they knew it was coming. The coaches said this week, we're going to take them off the three-point line and make them score on the inside, and that's exactly what they did, and Kentucky had no answer. So fans have a right to be really, really upset. Of course, we all know that a fan favorite around Kentucky is Reed Shepard. And, you know, he had kind of a disappointing performance tonight. I, I have no doubt that he's upset with himself. You know, we're all kind of, I think, hoping that he comes back to Kentucky. Do you think that this performance could impact his stock potentially if he does decide to go to the NBA? I think it absolutely could. I thought Michael made a great point about his dad going out on top and, uh, you know, Reed being the competitor that he is. Uh, you know, he was uh, clearly unhappy when his team was knocked out of the state tournament last year, of course, uh, but didn't have any uh, way to come back and make it right. Well, now he does uh, and had a, obviously a good year, uh, but still suffered defensively and did so tonight. It's so like a friend of mine pointed out to me, uh, texted me, said, our freshmen played like freshmen. Reed played like a freshman. Dillingham played like a freshman. Uh, really, they all did. Uh, that's just sometimes what happens in the NCAA tournament. But uh, I wouldn't be stunned if Reed came back, not at all. Hey, Dick. Well, uh, I'm still here in Pittsburgh, and, you know, the shock of this loss compared to two years ago losing to St. Peter's is something I'm, I'm still thinking about. You know, that, that loss to St. Peter's with Oscar, who was the national player of the year, was stunning and had fans obviously upset, but that was – the third season that Calipari had not made it past the first weekend. Now to do it again, I think it's a mix of shock and, and true disappointment and anger. I was wondering, Dick, could you just, when you look at the whole landscape of Cal, where he was going the Final Fours to now, like how do those two losses compare in your eyes? Well, I think going into that St. Peter's game, you'll probably agree that, uh, or most people would, that Kentucky was struggling a bit. They were still trying to figure out an offensive flow and, and how do we make things work with Oscar camped around the basket. And, you know, oh, there was just a lot going on. This team, we all knew it had deficiencies defensively, but who would have thought that Oakland could have held this team under 75 points? So I, I think this one, and, and with the roster that from the, the games in Toronto we saw was just loaded with potential, but it got better defensively, maybe just that 10%, but they couldn't get stops tonight when they had to have them. So I think given the, the relative strength of this roster versus the one two years ago, I think this one's got to sting a heck of a lot more. But I tell you what, I was amazed at all the national talking heads who had Kentucky going to the Elite Eight, the Final Four, the championship game. I think, Michael, those of us like you and me who cover this team and fans were a lot more skeptical, but I don't know how many people saw this coming tonight. All right, Dick Gabriel, we appreciate you so much for your analysis. I'm sure we'll be talking more with you throughout the week as well. You know, this one and done thing that we have going here in Kentucky, that, you know, that experience makes a huge difference yeah. in big tournaments yeah. like this. Dick's so. sports show and all the radio shows are going to be very interesting for you the next couple of days. You know they will be.